welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and there's no place on earth that exudes the spirit of the Wild West quite like Cody, Wyoming. We're gonna bring you along to Cody with us this week, so stay tuned. Cody is a small town in northwestern Wyoming's Bighorn Basin, founded by and named for William F. Cody, better known to most Americans as Buffalo Bill. For many travelers, Cody is the eastern gateway to Yellowstone National Park. However, Cody is a worthy RV travel destination in its own right. Considered to have been one of America's most recognizable celebrities at the end of the 19th century, Buffalo Bill was instrumental in the founding of Cody in 1895. He first passed through the region in the 1870s and was impressed by the development possibilities of the Bighorn Basin from irrigation, rich soil, grand scenery, hunting, and proximity to Yellowstone Park. Streets in the town are named after Cody's associates, Beck, Alger, Rumsey, Bleistein, and Salisbury. The town was incorporated in 1901. Bill Cody's fortunes grew thanks to the worldwide popularity of his traveling show, Buffalo Bill's Wild West. The frontiersman, scout, buffalo hunter, and actor opened the Irma Hotel, named after his own daughter, in 1902 in the newly formed town of Cody, to cater to a growing number of tourists coming through town to visit Yellowstone Park. Eventually, Buffalo Bill would own some 8,000 acres of ranch land across Wyoming's Bighorn Basin, where he operated a dude ranch, hosting 1,000 head of cattle, and a big game hunting preserve into the early 20th century. The city of Cody proudly proclaims itself to be the rodeo capital of the world. While it's home to the town's massive annual stampede over the July 4th holiday weekend, they also stage the Cody Night Rodeo every night at 8 p.m. throughout the summer months. Buffalo Bill Cody had envisioned transforming the sagebrush of the Bighorn Basin into farmland irrigated by the Shoshone River, which runs through town in a canyon. However, not even his Wild West show had amassed sufficient funds to transform Cody's vision into reality. So instead, Cody transferred land rights to thousands of his acres west of town to the federal government's newly formed Reclamation Service, later known as the Bureau of Reclamation to undertake one of the first federal water development projects, creating what is now called Buffalo Bill Reservoir. Construction of the Shoshone Dam, framed by the river's narrow cleft between Rattlesnake Mountain to the north and Cedar Mountain to the south, started in 1905, only a year after the Shoshone project was authorized. Seven workers were killed on the project through numerous setbacks and mishaps during construction. When the 325-foot concrete structure was completed in 1910, it was the tallest dam in the world. Almost three decades later, the dam's name and reservoir were both changed by an act of Congress to honor Cody's vision. Immediately after completion, the dam suffered from leakage through the outlet works, leading to low water elevations that exposed mud flats, which soon produced dense blowing dust. Despite corrective work, the dam continued to lose capacity as a result of the Shoshone River's heavy silt load. To compensate for this loss, the crest of the dam was raised 25 feet during the 1980s and 1990s. For our week in Cody, we're staying eight miles west of town, right on the shoreline of Buffalo Bill Reservoir, at Wyoming's Buffalo Bill State Park, home to two waterfront campgrounds. 
We're in the Lakeshore Campground with 37 campsites, a day use area, and a boat ramp. All campsites are by reservation only during the summer months. Two of the campground's three loops offer electrical hookups, whereas the third loop is dry camping only. Our campsite costs $210 per week plus taxes, and another $10 per night for electrical hookups. Sites are available for tent campers too, including large, flat, well-constructed tent platforms. While we're still traveling with our friends Pat and Dale, our campground has also provided an unexpected and unplanned opportunity to reconnect with our friends and viewers David and Ellie, known by their nickname Laughing Ram, for a friendly barbecue social as they're traveling through the area en route back home to Northern California. Wyoming is undoubtedly one of the windiest states in the nation, and the campground here on Buffalo Bill Reservoir is no exception. Winds here seemingly stir up at a moment's notice, with little to no warning, and often accompanied by nearly daily afternoon thunderstorms throughout our week here. At the west end of the reservoir, the State Park also operates the North Fork Campground, with another 62 campsites in a reservable group camp area. North Fork boasts a playground, shower facility with flush toilets, a large riparian area, abundant wildlife, and a large irrigated turf area to recreate in. When we come back following a quick ad break, we'll bring you along to the Buffalo Bill Center of the West, one of the nation's best museums of American West culture, as well as Old Trail Town and a former World War II Japanese internment camp in the sagebrush of Northern Wyoming. So stick around. It's only fitting that a town like Cody is home to the Buffalo Bill Center of the West, an absolute must-see while in the area. The large modern facility contains five extensive museums in one, including the Draper Natural History Museum, the Plains Indian Museum, the Cody Firearms Museum, the Whitney Western Art Museum, and of course, the Buffalo Bill Museum, which chronicles the life of William Cody. Buffalo Bill was born in LeClaire, Iowa Territory before his family settled in the Kansas Territory. Cody started working at the age of 11 after his father's death, 
and became a rider for the Pony Express at age 15. During the American Civil War, he served the Union from 1863 to the end of the war in 1865, and later served as a civilian scout for the U.S. Army during the Indian Wars, receiving the Medal of Honor. One of the most famous and well-known figures of the American Old West, Buffalo Bill's legend began to spread when he was only 23. He started performing in shows that displayed cowboy themes and episodes from the frontier and Indian Wars. He founded Buffalo Bill's Wild West in 1883, taking his large company on tours across the United States and, beginning in 1887, in Great Britain and continental Europe. The Draper Natural History Museum within the Buffalo Bill Center takes a close-up look at the flora and fauna prevalent at differing elevations across the Northern Rockies. The Plains Indian Museum within the Buffalo Bill Center tells the stories of Plains Indian cultures, traditions, trials, and triumphs past and present, including various artifacts from the 1800s, as well as modern works from today's native artists.
I'll be the first to admit that I'm usually not a fan of art museums, but the Whitney Western Art Museum within the Buffalo Bill Center has left me fascinated. The Buffalo Bill Center of the West's Cody Firearms Museum includes over 10,000 artifacts to educate visitors about firearms and their important role in the taming of the West. The collections at the Buffalo Bill Center of the West are so extensive, visitors can easily spend a full day or more here. It's a good thing, then, that the museum's ticket price of $23 for adults, minus a $1 discount for seniors, is actually good for two consecutive days of admission. Following another quick ad break to pay the bills, we'll check out some of Butch Cassidy's old hangouts at Old Trail Town as well as the former World War II Japanese internment camp at Heart Mountain. So stay tuned. At the western edge of town, near the Stampede Rodeo Grounds, the Old Trail Town Museum commemorates the traditions of Western life through a number of cabins, saloons, blacksmith shops, and other ghost town relics moved to the original town site of Cody from around the region. These include original cabins used by Old West outlaws Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, a Wyoming saloon frequented by Cassidy's Hole in the Wall gang, the log cabin home of the Crow Indian Army Scout Curly, who helped guide George Custer in the U.S. 7th Cavalry to the Battle of Little Bighorn, and more.
Admission to Old Trail Town costs $12 per adult, and visitors may easily spend a couple of hours walking through the museum's intriguing collections. Heart Mountain Relocation Center, located about 11 miles northeast of Cody, was one of 10 relocation camps built to house people of Japanese descent, forcibly relocated from the west coast of the United States during World War II following the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. The roughly 14,000 Japanese detained at Heart Mountain include both Japanese immigrants and U.S. citizens. President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066 on February 19, 1942. The order authorized the establishment of military areas, encompassing most of the west coast of the United States, from which any or all persons may be excluded. This allowed for the removal from these areas of Japanese Americans and those of Japanese ancestry, out of fear that they might support Japan in the war. In March 1942, President Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9102, which established the War Relocation Authority, the federal agency responsible for the evacuation, relocation, and internment of some 120,000 Japanese Americans and those of Japanese ancestry, and the construction and administration of 10 inland internment camps throughout the United States, like here at Heart Mountain. Evacuees came to the Heart Mountain Relocation Center by train from California, Washington, and Oregon to 650 buildings and structures that stretched upon this present-day farmland. Construction began on June 15, 1942, and the first evacuees arrived on August 11, 1942. At its population peak, the camp was the third largest city in Wyoming. Barracks assignments were based on family size, and apartments contained an army cot with two blankets and a pillow for each member of the family, one light, and a wood-burning stove. This is the one original barrack still standing at the Heart Mountain site. hospital boiler house and its associated smokestack is one of the most defining features still standing on the camp property.
We hope that you've enjoyed visiting the area surrounding Cody, Wyoming with us. It is extremely important that if you like this episode, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up down below. And while you're down below, leave us a comment where we always love to hear from you after each grand adventure. If you're not yet a grand adventurer yourself, coming up next week, we're going to be back to boondocking in the beautiful Bighorn Mountains of North Central Wyoming. So now is the perfect time for you to go smash that little subscribe button right down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen and ring that notification bell to be sure that you never miss a grand adventure which we premiere every Wednesday evening. We'd be truly honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. So until next Wednesday from the Bighorn Mountains, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.